Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the new day. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him when the sun goes down. Say it again. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Everybody ought to pray. Way 
heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We will sing and shout the victory. Come on, say it again. When we all get to heaven. Come on, y'all. What a day of rejoicing that will be. Where we are, oh, come on, what a day of rejoicing, hey, come on, somebody get happy, when we are, when we are, see Jesus, we will see and child the victory. Come on and put your hands together. Come on, y'all. Thank God for this woman. Thank God for this woman. Thank God for her life. Did she touch you? Did she speak a word to you? Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> there is power, power, wonder working power. In the blood of the Lamb, said there is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood. Of the Lamb. Put your hands together. God bless you. God bless you. belongs to you if you live right. Somebody give God a praise if you know that heaven belongs to you. It's a pleasure to be here to celebrate uh, a beautiful queen in the body of Christ, affectionately known as Mama D. And there's been an amazing, powerful gathering earlier today and this is just a continuation of the celebration so we're grateful for you being here we're grateful for uh brookside and the the staff the pastor for hosting us today and for all of the men and women of god who have traveled uh across the way to be here to celebrate uh this wonderful woman of god there's some there's some special people here today um, and you'll hear from them momentarily. I just want to pause and just pray. Can we do that? Yes. And uh, just invite the presence of God into our midst. Uh, Father, we thank you for our time together. We thank you for uh, this celebration of Sister Edeline. God, we thank you for the time that you have 
loaned her to us and how she's impacted our lives. And we thank you for each person that is gathered here today from near and far to express their love and, and, and share their memories and, and help us celebrate the life, a life well lived. And we bless you. We invite you into this space, God. We, we, we pray that you would make your presence known. We, 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 want, we don't want to leave without encountering you in this space. So, God, we ask that you would manifest yourself in this space. As we celebrate your daughter, God, we pray that you would show up in our midst. You said that you inhabit the praises of the righteous. And so we, we anticipate a manifestation of your glory in this place today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Bishop Ellis is, is with us all the way from Detroit, Michigan. Um, it, it would take me too long to properly introduce you, Bishop. <laughs> but I'm going to ask him if he would come on up and, and share whatever is on his heart at this time. Praise the Lord, everybody. We were so sad to hear of the transition, uh, as a friend called her Mama D, we called her Aunt Adeline, and that's who she was to us. It is no secret that my dad, Bishop Ellis, and Bishop Abney were the best of friends. Uh, they used to joke that they were girlfriends, amen. You can't joke like that today, amen. Uh, they were so close, and that's who they were, uh, him. Bishop Abney and Bishop Pratt, the best of friends, and Bishop Hope became a part of that crew as well. But I thank God for those times, and, and I say to my cousins here, because we were blessed to have cousins that were not of our blood, because our parents, they didn't have all the money in the world, so everybody needed everybody. So they became brothers and sisters, and that afforded us to have family beyond our families. So thank God that when I see, you know, you ask black people, that's my cousin, that's my cousin. Dang, man, you got a lot of cousins. Well, well yeah. you know, hey, bro, you got a lot of brothers. Well, black folk, at the end of the day, we all connected some kind of way and some kind of how. But I'll just share some fond memories. Uh, you know, I remember coming up to Grand Rapids to the church on Eastern. And uh, the church had all those stained glass windows. And, you know, we didn't have stained glass in Detroit like that. So we thought Uncle Bill had it going on, but Uncle Bill was always flashy. You know, Uncle Bill was wearing red socks, yellow socks, way back in the day before socks became popular. But if I go back to the stories of Bunny and Peaches that I heard, and Bishop Hatton is here, so he's going to confirm that there were three choirs in the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World, David had. There were three choirs that sang at conventions, and that was the Bethel Choir, Amen. Grand Rapids, that was the New Bethel Temple Choir in Detroit. And my father's choir, he directed at our grandfather's church, 35th Street in Chicago, Illinois. And uh, 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 Uncle Bill and my dad used to always talk. Uh, Bishop Hatton was the baby at that time, you know, and, and he was the youngest musical director and choir director at that time, probably 18 years old. So they said, uh, New Bethel can't hang with Bethel in 35th Street. They said, but we're going to let him join our crew anyhow. But your mom was a part of that choir back then. And that was a time before any of us even thought about singing. Any of us thought about having and using our musical talents that God blessed us to have and to, and to grow into. So we thank God that that's the legacy she has. That's the group that she grew up with. And when you think about it, I was saying to the Lord, so I said, man, we are that generation. I'm 66, thank God, this year, and I feel good and think I look pretty good. But at the end of the day, we've gone on somewhere. I'm not sure where that somewhere is, but, but, but we've moved on because I'm looking up. And there are not a whole lot of people to see that I used to admire, that I used to try to be like, that I could call for advice in those individuals that would be the sages in our life. But I thank God that we still have each other. And we are that generation. And the Ellis's and the Abney's and the Hoax and the Hatton's and the Pratt's. And that generation that remains, I hope that we will forever be connected. And wherever God takes us, whatever God does for us, I want you to know 
that you can always count on me. My number is always the same, and, and you put your name in there because I answer whoever it is. Amen. As long as it ain't the devil, I answer my phone. It doesn't matter. But always count on me because God has blessed me to do some things and to become some things, and I share that with all of my family, and you all are a part of my family. So never will you all need me and I not show up and do whatever I can to be of help to you all. We all we have is each other. And I don't know how long we have, but as long as we have, I'm going to give all I can. So thank you for allowing me just to participate in this sacred saints service on today. Love you all to life, and please pass the word to all of my cousins as well. God bless you all. Thank you for this time. mentioned that previous generation is going on and we don't have them to look to and admire anymore and you said we're going somewhere but you're not sure where we went we've become that generation we were the ones Bishop Abner used to say when he was young he, he, he used to say he's become the old people that he used to make fun of is that, is that us now? <laughs> I'm in that 60-something group, too. But you know what? I'm, I'm, I consider it a blessing, amen, to, to be able to, to, to age in Christ. And my, my desire is that we can provide the kind of model, the kind of example that those that have gone before us have provided us. Amen. Because we got a generation coming up. And I, you know, I read somewhere that young people weren't, weren't you know, interested in God. I, I read that generation, uh, the millennials and down, the millennials and the generations beneath them had lost their interest in God. But I'm seeing something different. I'm, I'm seeing young people on fire for God. I'm seeing young people with a passion for God. And you know why that is? Because some seeds have been sown by previous generations and those seeds are beginning to bring forth fruit. And so I'm excited about what God is doing in this family. This morning, what I witnessed, what I saw God do was powerful, buddy. It was powerful. And, 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 and I, I, I just, I, I agree with uh, Apostle Jay that, that there's, that, that there's a, there's a restoration, there's a breakthrough, and there's, there's a reconciliation. That's, and you know what? The fruit's going to remain. It's going to remain. What had happened today was just not a one and done episode. That's, you're going to see that fruit remain. You're going to see it blossom. And, and I'm looking forward to what God is doing and going to do. It is good to have Bishop Hatton here today with us. Come on, give it up for Bishop and Lady Hatton, Dr. Hatton. There's, there's some other pastors here I want to mention. Um, is Lady Hoke here? Did you, did you say Lady Hoke was here? No? Okay. Um, I know Pastor Moody was here. I think he had to leave. He's still back there. Good to have you with us, Pastor Moody. Pastor Dorian is here with us today. It's good to have her here. And are there other pastors that I'm missing? If, you are, if you're here, just raise your hand. I know, I, I know. I ain't, ain't going to forget about them. <laughs> how, how can I? Question is? <laughs> no, I ain't going to even try. It is, it is an absolute delight. I have never personally met Bishop Winans until today. Now see, I've, I've, I've met Bishop Ellis, and I, you know, I've come up with him, behind him, but I've never had the privilege of meeting Bishop uh, Winans, and I knew that he uh, had a dear relationship with, with my pastor, Bishop Abney, and I've admired you from a distance, sir, continue to admire you. And at this time, we're going to have him come and share whatever God puts on his heart. Praise 
Praise God. Um, I, I apologize I don't even think I need this. first because I'll have to leave and go and drive to Toledo, Ohio uh, in the next few moments. But giving honor to Bishop uh, Charles Ellis, to Bishop Hatton, to all of you that I know and don't know, to this family. Uh, I met uh, Mother DeBarge uh, through her brother. And although he was way older than I am, <laughs> Uncle Bill and I became great friends. And this is, this is truth. I would drive from Detroit to Grand Rapids just to play Scrabble. And that's all we do. I would drive here, go to his house, play Scrabble, and uh, leave and go home. Uh, it was Bishop Abney, hallelujah, that talked to me when um, I was considering pastoring. Um, and I, I came up here to Grand Rapids, and he sat with me. They, they were having a revival. I'll never forget it. Um, and afterwards, we went to the house, and we just sat in. and Mother uh, Abner was so kind. And he looked at me, and he said, Marvin, whatever you're going to do, you need to do it now. He said, I sang for years, and then I waited and waited. He said, don't wait. Whatever you do, God's hand is on you. Don't, don't listen. You go after it and do what God has called you to do. And that, a lot of people don't know that, and that was the thing, because you know, you hear the prophecies, you hear what God is saying, you know what God, but you need someone that is established to give you the strength to step out. And not only did um, uh, we start the church, but I was honored to have him come and preach and sing and do whatever Uncle Bill wanted to do. And he would drive down to Detroit and just play me Scrabble. And, and I, it, he was funny because he'd talk all while he, he's beating you. I mean, we only put three words down. I, I remember sitting in his living room. We put three words down. And he said, oh, Marvin, you want to quit right now because you're not going to win this game. We can just start all over. And uh, we had, and I did beat him a few times, but... But we had a great time together, and it was through him that I met his sister and the family. And uh, my mom gives her love, as I told her I was coming. She wants you to know that she loves you and the rest of the Winans whining, family. Uh, A-flat. In, in honor of Uncle Bill. I, I've had some good days. Oh. Maybe I need to take that down to... F sharp, why don't you go down there? I've had some good days. Sing it, Bishop. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days. And lonely nights. We I look around and when I think things over all of my good days outweigh my bad days so I won't complain Sometimes the clouds hang low I can hardly see the road That's when I question, Lord Why so much pain? But He knows what's best for me even when my weary eyes can't see. So I'll say thank you, Lord. I won't complain. God has been good to me. 
The Lord has been good to me more than this world could ever be. God has been good to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he'll do this. He drives all my tears away. Turns my darkness in the day. So I'll say, thank you, Lord. I may not understand it, but I'll say, thank you, Lord. I may not even agree with it, but I'll say, thank you, Lord. I won't complain. Bless you, Bishop. Thank you, sir. Most of us remember when that was Bishop Abney's sort of his anthem. I won't complain. Regardless of what life brings my way, I won't complain. I'll just say thank you. Thank you. Anybody have a thank you inside of you right now? Hasn't always been easy, but God, thank you. And some folk may think it's strange to be saying thank you in a moment like this. You ought to be sad. But it's not that your hearts aren't heavy. We, we sorrow, we, we grieve, but not like everybody else because we have a hope. And we know where Aunt Adeline is. We know where Mama D is. And we know that one day, the song y'all sang said, if I live right, heaven belongs to me. We know that one day we will be reunited with her. So with that in mind, I can say thank you. Thank you for the life that she lived. Thank you for the love that she gave. Thank you for the legacy that she left. And thank you that she's in the presence of God right now. And thank you that I will see her again. Somebody ought to say thank you. Hallelujah. I think right now we're going to invite family and friends that would like to share a moment, share an experience with Aunt Adeline, Mama D, to come at this time. Um, How long did you say? Two minutes, all right. Family, Sister Bonnie is asking that we limit our, uh, our comments to two minutes. So if you have a, a memory or would like to just offer a word of encouragement to the family, we welcome you to come at this time. I was going to get him. I was, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to get him. <laughs> you want to come down, Bishop? Come on, sir. Come on, sir. I was going to try to spread that, the heavy weight out a little bit, but we're going to get it all in. Thank you. Master Ceremonies. To this great family. Now, how long do I go back with this family? You'll be surprised. I go back with their great grandfather, Bishop Abner's father. Back in old Pentecostal days, before there was really organizations, it was. Brother James Abney Sr. used to sing on the midnight programs at the little old churches. 
I'm going to share with you the song that you used to sing. The little wooden church out on the hill. And my mother would come and sing. I looked down the line and I wondered to see how far I was from God. I'm just so happy to be here today to celebrate this occasion of a young lady I've always admired. We were all coming up together in the Pentecostal Assemblies of the world. And of course, I was a part of the music rendition of the church at that time. And one night at Bethel, they called for Mother D, as you all are calling her tonight, to sing. And when she starts singing, I had never heard her sing. When she starts singing, the voice was so beautiful and so smooth. And eloquent. I, I was playing the guitar that night. I stopped with the guitar down. So who is this lady singing, I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. Nobody can sing that like Mother D. And so as Bishop Ellis was saying, his dad and Bishop Ellis was the best of friends. Well, the next generation, their uncle, Mother D's brother and I, James, became the best of friends. And we were a part of music condition that formed a Metropolitan Mass Choir. And we sang throughout the Pentecostal Assemblies of the world with people like Norman Wagner's choir in Ohio and around the world. We sang together. He would write songs, I would write songs. Uncle James would come to my house and stay all day. He said, man, listen to this. Let's get this, get this, man. Check this out. I said, man, I've been checking out everything you're telling me all day long. Don't you think it's about time to stop? He said, come on, Bernard. Come on, you got to listen to this, man. Is he here today? I was looking, I hoping I would see him. But this family and I, actually, all of James' offspring, because we were the best of friends, because we were so close, he, he was my brother from another mother. Y'all could call me Uncle Clarence starting today because that's how close we were. And so my wife and I were flying in from Atlanta, Georgia, where she's being featured in a movie. And uh, Bonnie sent a message on the phone, said that this service would be today, and she requested my wife and I to come and be a part. And so we were so happy to, to get up this morning at 7 o'clock and drive three hours because money asked us to come. Yes. So like Bishop Ellis, we're all family. I remember Bishop Ellis, Bishop Abney, and Bishop Ellis and I, we drove together as a, as a, as a, as a group going to California to preach. I think Bishop Abner drove the first 10 hours. Bishop Ellis drove the second 10, 10 hours, and I drove the last 10 hours. And out of, that, out of that trip, I'm the only one remaining now. And I'm 84 years old now. If God let me live any longer, in the next three months, I'll be 85. Thank God I'm still here. And I'm like, I'm like Bishop Ellis. I think I still look pretty good for 84. God bless you. And to Bishop Wineland, who is not gone. But we thank the Lord. My wife and I are happy to be here today. Keep us in your prayers. My brother came along with us as well. When I told David I was going, he said, Edeline? He said, man, I, I want to go. I got to go. So we just love you all. We'll always be connected. I'm Uncle Clarence. For those of you, I guess I'm good. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, Bishop Hatton, anybody ever heard of uh, Dietrich Hatton? These are his parents.
Thank you, sir, for being here. Bonnie, that, that speaks volumes. You, Bishop Haddon, Bishop Winans, Bishop Ellis, here for you. That, that, that speaks volumes. Not only was your mom well-loved, but I'm starting to believe you're well-loved. Yeah. 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 yeah, Sister Edeline was well-known and well-loved. Any family members want to come and share at this time? I want to thank everybody that came and made it out to celebrate my grandmother. I'm her snuggles. Um, when I was younger, I, uh, we came from California, and I, I would love to go and sleep in the bed with my grandmother. You couldn't tell me nothing, okay, about my grandmother. I would sometimes have real stomach aches, but sometimes I would have fake stomach aches <laughs> so that I could stay at home from school with my grandma. And she would take us to the rum cell, and we would go have breakfast, and somehow we would always end up with Hong Kong in. And so I would definitely fake some of my stomach aches so, so that I could do that. And she would say, Janae, I thought your stomach ache. And I say, Grandma, it did, but now I feel so much better now that you just loved on me, and I really want to go with you, Grandma. And she said, that's my snuggles. I'll take you with me. I was with my grandmother um, a couple of days before she passed. I live in California. So I try my best to go see her. And I can tell you this, that her life changed me, but her death changed me even more. Because my grandmother laid in that bed. And she just called on Yahweh. And she was sitting in the bed and she was trying to get up. And she was looking right in front of her, but there was nothing there. And she said, you don't see him, do you? You don't see him? And I said, I don't know what you're talking about. Grandma. And then she started talking to me. And I said, Grandma, she's not here. She said, yes, she is. And so she looked over, and you cannot tell me that God was not in that room. The way she looked, the smile, the expression on her face, as if she was talking to, to someone standing right in front of her, that she knew he was there to come get her. And she had been waiting on her king to come get her. And she had been preparing me for this day. For about a year, I would call her and she would tell me, I'm ready to go, Janae. And I would say, Grandma, I'm not ready yet. So you're going to have to wait till I get ready. The last conversation I had with her, I told her I was ready. And I understood why she wanted to go. Because the joy on her face and the desire for her to go was so much more to me than me wanting her to be here. So I just want to say that I love my grandma, my whole heart. And if I ever needed a word, I could pick up the phone and call her. And she told me when this day happened, and I've never even told my mom this, that I have to get up here and tell all y'all, not today, <laughs> not today, okay? She don't want to hear it. She don't want no drama. And she wants y'all to celebrate her and know that she's in a better place. So not today. Hello, my name is Denny Barbie the Children. My mother, my first mother, is in the same cemetery as my 
mother, motherly bonds now. Y'all call it mommy bonds. Love always. As Bobby said, unfortunately I couldn't be there at Tommy's, my guys, and Bobby's funeral, but I'm here at mama's. I'm here at my mama's funeral. You know, God bless her. May she rest in peace. I talked to her over the years. She, she never forgot me. She never. She kept me abreast on all her children. I met these people long ago when they first came to Grand Rapids. These was my people. This is my other family. This is my mother. Uh, my second mother. My second mother. And I love her to death. Over the years, we always stayed in contact, even though I Siblings, we did because we all went separate ways. Even before the entertainment and the fame and the Hollywood and the music, we always stayed in contact, one way or the other. Mother DeBarge always kept me informed of all her children, from Funny Rabbit to Bobby before he departed, to my boy Tommy, Al, her baby boy who she carried everywhere with her. You know, that's why he loved her so much, and she loved everybody unconditionally, all her children. Nobody, no, none of them was any different from the other. But you know what she told me on the last days? When she stopped picking up that phone, I knew. I said, Mama, I ain't ready to meet the king yet. You just stay strong and hold on and keep your ministry going. When she stopped picking up that damn phone a couple, few months ago, I said, uh-oh, and I looked on her Facebook and I said, what the fuck? Ooh, excuse me, we're in church, I apologize. Me and Mama DeBarge, we talk like this. We talk like this, I apologize, I love God. But this is the way we talk. You know, she always kept it real with me, on a spiritual level and any other level. You know, I understand we're at church, I apologize. But you know, I have to keep it real because I'm a real person. You know, and, and we are real people, you know. And I love this lady to death. She's like my mother. She's next to my mother, close to my mother, in the same cemetery. I got two mothers there. I got a, I got a, I got a brother there, another brother. I got Bobby there. Hey, we're together. Where are my guys at? They were supposed to be here. My other, my other brothers, where they at? I got a whole lot to say, but I know somebody want to say something else. Amen. 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 God bless our brother. He was expressing his heart towards the family. And... Uh, Any, any other family members or friends that would like to have words of expression? Come on up, Rodney. Praise the Lord, everyone. I um, have mixed emotions today. Just like everyone else, you know, Mama Erlene was always there for us. Uh, I spent many days at her house uh, when I lived in Grand Rapids and with the family. <laughs> um, Ms. Peaches. Uh, but I remember sometimes I would stay there for so long and it'd get late and she'd call downstairs and she'd go, like, okay, Ronnie, it's time to go. <laughs> but um, she always looked out for me and um, up until I was almost a teenager, I believe that we were actual family. And um, yes, we definitely are family, but i um, glad that we wasn't actual family for different reasons. Uh, <laughs> that we'll, but anyway, um, God looked out for us through her. I remember one time she sang a song to me which I'm not going to sing, but I will say some of the words. And the, the words were, I miss my time with you, those moments together. I need to be with you each day. And it hurts me when you say you're too busy, busy trying to serve me. But how can you serve me when your spirit is empty? 
There's a longing in my soul, wanting more than just a part of you. It's true, I miss my time with you. And that was the, the main song that came to me when I heard about Mama passing. And I miss my time with her. So I was just praying for the family. And I love you guys, my brothers and sisters. And that's all I got for today. We're going to have another friend of the family to come at this time. Um, most of you who are from Grand Rapids know who he is. Uh, the Honorary uh, Kent County Commissioner in the person of Mr. Robert Womack. Thank you, Grand Rapids, and a special thanks to the DeBarge and Abney family for allowing me to be a part of this and speak. Um, through my path in life, sometimes I ask God how I end from one place to another place, especially politics and in City Hall. But I thank God that I went there because I might be one of the few that understand the importance of, the, of Edeline DeBarge's contributions to Grand Rapids. Let's give it up for her for picking Grand Rapids as a second home. By Edeline DeBarge moving to Grand Rapids and bringing her beautiful children to Grand Rapids, they helped put Grand Rapids on the map. And we have never really acknowledged them for what they have done. And it's time for us to do that. So before I do that, I want to just say, first of all, too, one quick memory of Edeline DeBarge. I used to love to go on Alger with Danky and get some of that Abney DeBarge cooking. And, and it was always a wonderful time. But one day I saw Edeline DeBarge, Mr. DeBarge, and I was saying hi in my little hi, and she snapped on me. And I wasn't gonna say nothing because we respected our elders growing up. Secondly, don't let that light skin fool you. You don't want them DeBarge boys on your head, so. But none of that hit me. What hit me first is like, no one ever talked to me like this. It's like if God opened up heavens, talk to you, we all want him to do that, but if you do it, you're going to go. So when she started talking to me, I was thinking too, how does she know this dumb stuff that I did? And she was letting me know. And I tell y'all, that's the love we got to continue with our kids and youth. We can't just be their friends, we got to be their parents. And she was all our parents. If you knew her, if your kid is about to get hit by a car running out in the street, you're going to say, hey. And that's how she was talking to me. Then she was like, and don't forget to come over tomorrow for dinner. It's Sunday. I'm cooking. You know, this is a true woman of God. And there's times that I've thought about her and some of my other elders when I sit in my seat as a, uh, I'm on uh, some committees for Governor Gretchen Whitmer right now. And maybe a couple months ago, I thought about four or five elders that put me right. And Edeline DeBarge was one of them. She was one of them, and I thank her, because that takes love. People are scared to talk to kids today, because you don't know what they're going to do. But that's love to put yourself out there and say, hey, stop, young man, because as you know, the wages of sin is death. I also want to shout out Bunny, who are named after Adeline, which I recently found out. I always called her Bunny, but she's been baby mama DeBarge all her life, so let's give it up for her and for putting this together. But, but to make this short, I just wanna say, from the city of Grand Rapids, Michigan, and from Kent County, we officially wanna support and recognize Edeline DeBarge, her family, and this is a single mother that came here with her children and made an impact on the world. So let's give Edeline DeBarge a standing ovation from Grand Rapids and Kent County. Love you, Adeline. Thank you to the DeBarge and Abney family. Sir, for all the work you do, we're going to 
we're going to move expeditiously. There's some other um, contributions coming from, from others. At this time, before we transition to what's next, we're going to um, hear from Pastor Dorian. Thank you so much. I'll be brief on today. On behalf of KLM Church, we just want to extend our condolences and our love to the entire family. And you know, I grew up listening to Mama DeBarge sing, and you never forget a voice like that. And as I became a pastor later in my life, she used to come into the prayer meetings and just begin to support. And not only is this a singing family, I need you to understand this is a praying family. And how many know a family that prays together stays together? And so uh, Paul told Timothy something interesting, and I'm going to take my seat, but he said the same faith that was in your mother and your grandmother lives in you. And so I encourage this family today, the same faith that's in Mama DeBarge rests on you. And yeah. it's your turn now to carry her legacy and her life on in worship and in prayer. God bless all of you today. Bless you, Pastor. At this time, I understand there's a special video presentation um, from Fred Hammond that's going to be played. And then after that, um, the psalmist will come and share with us one of um, Sister Adeline's favorite songs. I'll come back for about five, ten minutes, and she's going to come and close it out, and uh, that will conclude the celebration. At this time, the video. Hey, family. Hey, family. Hey, listen. This is Kazi. Uh, I uh, just wanted to send this video. Um, sorry to hear about Auntie, and uh, I didn't want this to pass by without me saying something. Recently, Bunny and I have connected and I've always stayed um, uh, connected with Elle. We've been out on the road and passing each other and, um, and to everybody there, to all of the brothers that I grew up with, James, uh, Randy, Marty, uh, Chico, uh, man, you know, and everybody, Uncle James, everybody there, all the family and extended family their auntie, um, um, she's going to be with the Lord now. Uh, I sent a video, but it never made it to L about my other hero, which was Tommy. So I'm gonna say what I gotta say now. Tommy was the first person that inspired me to play bass, period. Uh, when we would come and visit Bethel or go to the councils where uh, Bethel and the choir was there. I, I remember the band, Bobby. I saw L, little L on the piano. And I saw Tommy on bass, Freddie on drums, with Uncle James up there and just you know, doing his thing. I remember out of everybody, uh, and I was loving instruments, I saw Tommy. Tommy had that bass and he was working. He had that big fro, and he, but he was playing. He was working it. And that was my guy. I really just admired everybody, and, and L and, and, and Marty and James, we hung out a lot in Detroit. And um, I was proud of you all when you all made it. And I would come and sit, you know, in the rafters from time to time and just watch y'all shows when you were with Luther and, and different ones. And, uh, but I'm, you know, I'm here now just to say how much I love Auntie. She loved on me every time she saw me. And I know she was proud. Um, and um, her and mom were good friends, everything that I saw. And I remember, I have really flashed, some deep flashbacks um, of my childhood. And I remember actually when mom would drop me off at, um, at the house with uh, Bunny and Bobby and, and all the kids, because my other family, the reason I knew the difference, my other family, side of the family, was dark skinned. They was all kind of dark-skinned people. And I knew I'm here with all these light-skinned people. Hey, this is, this is dope. You know, hey, cool. And I remember being around as a 
real small child. Vague, vague memories, but I love you all. And um, it's all right. Uh, celebrate her. You know, I know we're sad uh, from where she's leaving, but we're not sad where she's going. I love you, family. You all be great, and uh, we'll see you soon, all right? Love you. Jason, we have a special request right now, and I think we're going to regret, we're going to grant this request. Everybody knows in the family <laughs> that Mama used to send up a little note for a request for <laughs> Sister Adeline to sing. <laughs> so we have a request. Can you put it on the video of my mother? <laughs> City called heaven. <laughs> Sing so steadily. Best to find a city and it's got to be on here somewhere. She was so dramatic. Another, <laughs> I can't seem to find it. All I know is that I've got to go. She's gonna have fun. She's gonna have fun. She's gonna have fun somewhere. City gonna have fun. City gonna have fun. City gonna have fun somewhere. I got to make it. Help me to make it to that city called heaven somewhere. City gonna have fun. City gonna have fun. City gonna have fun somewhere. But you never see low, so think high thoughts though. Cause when it's my time, I got to go. She gonna have fun. She gonna have fun. She gonna have fun somewhere. She gonna have fun. She gonna have fun. She gonna have fun somewhere. She gonna have fun. City called heaven, city called heaven, somewhere. City called heaven, city called heaven, city called heaven, somewhere. I got to go, I got to go, I got to go. I got to go, I got to 
go, I got to go to City Car Heaven. City Car Heaven. City Car Heaven. Somewhere. City Car Heaven. City Car Heaven. City Car Heaven. Somewhere. City Car Heaven. City Car Heaven. City Car Heaven. Somewhere. Come on. City Car Heaven. It's a City Car Heaven. City Car Heaven. Somewhere. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. Say, we got to go. We got to go. We got to go. We got to go. Say it again. sing one of Adeline's known songs that she used to sing at Bethel when I was little. And it's a message in this song to me because, you know, when we're going through time, trials and tribulations and things that, that seem hard and heavy, like right now, we're going to miss that Adeline, but we know where she is. And the Bible says, God says, Whenever you're having trials or tribulations, he said, cast all your cares upon me and I'll give you rest. So, the song is called, I Must Tell Jesus. We got to tell him all of our troubles. Hallelujah. Bear with me, y'all, because I just learned this song. I must tell Jesus all of my troubles. I cannot. alone in my distress he Tell Jesus all of my trials. Nobody else can take care of it but Him. He is a friend, He is a friend like no other. That is faithful and so true. Yeah. 
your maker of your troubles quickly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody in here ever had to tell Jesus something that you couldn't tell anybody else? Didn't know where else to go, didn't know who to turn to? Somebody said, just a little talk with Jesus. We'll make it right. God bless you. We're getting ready to let you go because the hour's getting away from us. But there's a passage in the Bible in Psalms, excuse me, Proverbs chapter 31, verse 30, that sort of, I think, captures the essence of Mama D. And it reads something like this. It says, favor is deceitful, beauty fades, but, thank you for the but, who, who gave me? Thank you for the but. But the woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. Now, I've heard a lot throughout the day about Edeline and the beautiful person she is in terms of her as a mother and folks she's loved. 
and her singing, but it don't, you'd have to be blind to not notice how beautiful she was. I mean, that was a beautiful black sister. Can I just be real for about 30 seconds? And she had a swag. Uh, can I say that about your mama? She, she had a, a swag, a style that could nobody rock like her. Yeah, yeah. She was this beautiful person, but she wasn't just beautiful on the outside. She had a way about her that made you love her. It, 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 was, it was magnetic. It, was, it drew you to her. But it's interesting that the, the writer says, favor, graciousness can be deceitful and beauty fades. I don't know if you've had the experience of meeting somebody that looked good, sound good, acted good, but they were no good. Anybody ever, ever met anybody like that? Yeah, so, 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 so there's, there's a, what I call a pseudo beauty. It, it, it looks a certain way, but something's missing. And, and, and the difference between that kind of beauty and Mama D was the next clause, which says, a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. Mama D did not only look good, but her heart was good. I said you'd have to be blind to not notice how beautiful she was on the outside. You'd have to be, I don't know, something had to be wrong with you to not notice how good she was on the inside. She loved God. Sister Adeline, and it was, it, was, it was reflected in the way she lived her life. It wasn't simply something she talked about, but it was displayed, it was demonstrated in the way that she loved and cared for people. It was expressed through her music. And I had the privilege of listening to a, uh, I don't know who posted it, but it was a, a, a video on Facebook where she was singing and in between the songs she was, she was really declaring, proclaiming that he's coming, he's, he's coming, he's coming. And she asked a question. She said, are you ready? And that's the question I want to leave us with today. She did what she needed to do to be ready. And she's where he is. Question is, are we ready? Have we fallen in love with God like Mother Adeline, like Mama D? Have we surrendered our hearts to him? Like Mama D. And I want to suggest this to you. There's no love like the love of God. If you have not experienced being loved by him, you really have not been loved. But the good news is, he loves you whether you know it or not. And there is nothing you can do about it. So when Mama D would say that, she was just expressing God's heart. And I want you to know as you leave here today, you are loved by God. And all he wants is for you to love him back. God bless you. I think the, the, the team is going to come back and close us out with another song. And then I'll just come back and dismiss. is on, was it 1350? 1330. Thanks, somebody said it. 1330 Madison. 1530 Madison. And it's from four to six. Everybody come out. We have some delicious dinner for you. Okay? <laughs>
Okay, Jodira, take us there. Take us there, sweetie. I love you. Got one more song, y'all. We on our way out of here. The song is called Caught Up to Meet Him. How many of you can't wait to see the Lord one day? If we get our lives all the way right, we'll be able to see Jesus face to face. I can't wait till that day comes. Yeah. Oh. Caught up to meet him. Yes. Can't wait to see him. Wait.
praise. Hallelujah. Let us all stand as we prepare to go. Bless you, Sister Bonnie, and the entire family. Know that we are, we'll continually pray for you and be accessible to you. Beyond this day, we'll continue to be accessible, whatever we can do. It's just a phone call or a text. I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed. Hallelujah. I had to leave here today knowing that I can take my mom's strength and the faith that she has given me. Yes. And I can embrace the name. Hallelujah. Yes. Adeline. <laughs> Little Adeline. Yes. Thank you all for coming and making this a success because it's a new appointment in my life. Thank you very much. Come on, let's give God a praise for Sister Adeline. To all of the pastors that came to share, thank you for being here. Bishop Haddon, Dr. Haddon, thank you for being here. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, voice of an archangel, trump of God shall sound. Dead in Christ shall rise first. And those who are alive and remain shall be caught up <laughs> to meet him in the air. And so shall we ever be with him. Comfort yourselves with these words. Father, we thank you for what you have done in our midst. Thank you for the strength that you have released in this family. Thank you for the words of comfort that have been expressed. And I thank you that you will never leave nor forsake us. Yea, though we walk through the valley in the shadow of death, we will fear no evil because you are with us. Thank you that you will show up in those moments when there's nobody else. You'll show up in the midst of the grief and bring comfort. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Go in peace. <laughs>